Dealing with the death of a loved one can be emotional and challenging. It may be especially tough when there's improper planning. Our guest is an accomplished scholar and respected professor in taxation, trusts, and estates. With more than 16 years at FAMU Law, she has garnered a wealth of knowledge, and she's willing to share some of that knowledge here today. Get your pen and paper out as we take notes and learn about important information for proper estate planning. From FAMU Interim Associate Dean for Academic Affairs, Phyllis Tate. Welcome to Legal Connections, Dean Tate. Thank you. Good to be here. Whew. There's so much about these wills, and um, we just, we're happy that, that you're here. Does everyone need a will? Everyone should have a will. And I caution to say need because there are some situations in which you have um, default estate planning where you have property owned jointly and so everything will pass to your surviving spouse. But you can't always guarantee that. And so everyone should have a will because a will lets everyone know what your plans are for your property after your death. There's no way to really know what that is without your say so. I know a lot of people think that you have to be wealthy. I hear people a lot of times saying, I don't have anything, so I don't need a will. But you're saying that regardless, you, people have things that they don't realize of value. There are more than one ways in which you can use a will. For instance, if you have a minor child, that's one way in which you can let the world know what you want to happen with that child because we do put a provision in there for guardianship of your children. Um, there's usually some property that you own that you don't realize needs to be title changed. And if there's anything that you own that needs a title change, doesn't matter the value. You still need to know where you want that property to go. And the will helps facilitate that. Now, if you don't have a will, we can still transfer the property. It just may go in a place where you don't want it to go. For instance, um, if you're with a live-in person and you guys have gathered or garnered property over years where you've lived together for, let's say, 10 years, but you just decide you don't want to get married, if you die and the property is in your name, that person may end up with nothing. Or if you die and the property is in jointly in both your names but not in the right way, then half of it goes to his family or her family, and then the other half belongs to you. And now you own property with people you have no relationship with or maybe even a bad relationship with, and you need their permission to sell it, to get a loan against it. So there are different ways in which a will can help, even if you think you don't have any property or you think you're not wealthy enough to need a will. What about the family home? Now the family home is a little different because if you have it declared as your homestead, it can pass outside of probate. If you have minor children, you can't devise it anyway. But if you have a family home and you're not married mm -hmm. um, and it's not a homestead, you do get to decide where it goes. And again, if you don't decide in your will, then it's going to go where the state says it should go based on um, history. Mm -hmm. So if you have that live-in partner again, they get nothing. They're not on the list. Okay. If you have someone who is not your child, so say you have children, grown, adult children, and you want it to go to somewhere else, even charity, if you don't have a will, it goes to those children or that child or to your parents, whoever the state says it goes to. And for me, I, pr I prefer to have my property go where I want it to go since I was the one who built it up and paid for it and cultivated it. I like to have a say in where it goes. Absolutely, absolutely. One final question about tax implications with inheritance. Do you have any comments on, on how to structure? I guess I'm sure it depends, but any general words of wisdom in that space? The biggest misnomer we have about death and taxes is that everybody's going to pay a tax when they die. And that's absolutely not true. Here in the state of Florida, we don't even have an inheritance tax. So when you get the property from someone through an estate, there's no tax on that. We also don't have an estate tax in Florida. And so to the extent that you're passing property to someone, your estate doesn't owe a tax either. And so for the transfer of the property, there is no tax. Now there may be some income tax implications, meaning there's some property that is income earning that's going through the estate. And the same way it's taxed to you during life is the same way it'll be taxed to someone after death. But that's not associated with the death itself. That's associated with the fact that it's income producing property. Thank you so much. I could listen to you all day and I'm really good to see you as always and really appreciate your time this morning. You're welcome. Thank you. 
Having those important documents will make a huge difference when you are estate planning, so be prepared.